Hi everyone, this is our Katie Freckman, a New York City personal injury trial attorney. And today we have a slip and fall case that we're talking about. This is a case that I got an email about from Trial Guides, which was one of the groups that I belong to. And it's a slip and fall case against McDonald's and it's an enormous verdict, multi, multi-million dollar verdict out in California, actually in a conservative venue, Santa Monica. So how did they do it and how much did they get? Let's find out. So it was two attorneys. One was Brian Kim and the other one was Maureen Hennessy. And they had a lawsuit against McDonald's for a spine injury case. And basically what happened was their client was in a McDonald's and he was leaving. Uh, he went in to buy an orange juice and then he was leaving uh, toward the exit and he slipped and fell on a liquid. And they had figured out that the liquid that he fell on was a leak from one of the garbage bags that was left behind by a maintenance worker who was taking out the trash. So their client flew up in the air and he landed in the form of a V shape and he landed directly on his lower back. And the issue with this particular client was that he had a prior lower back injury and a prior lower back surgery. And he landed directly on that surgical site where he had that vulnerability, that prior surgery. And that surgical site absorbed the entire um, you know, impact of the fall. So he was 28 years old at the time of the injury. And so they argued that it disrupted him and it caused nerve damage to nerve roots um, in the susceptible lumbar spine. And then they proved the case through objective evidence such as EMGs, that's electromyography, positive neurological testing, and subsequent intraoperative findings showing nerve damage. So in the trial, um, what happened was the defense tried to make the trial complicated, right? Like a battle of the experts and very, very complicated. But the plaintiffs tried to make it really, really simple. And that's very important. You know, cognitive ease is very important and it's very persuasive. So they tried to make it simple. They only called six witnesses. They called the plaintiff. They called three damages witnesses, what I like to call circle of friends or community witnesses. They called two medical experts, a spine surgeon and a pain management doctor. And they also played videotape depositions of McDonald's employees. And they played um, one videotape deposition of a treating doctor as well. And they produced the entire trial in a storytelling fashion, right? They wanted to tell a story. Each witness played a separate role in telling that story. And they talked about the injury to their client's life. His name was Jonathan. So the injury to Jonathan's life. And uh, yeah, they said simplicity was key. They didn't want it to be tedious. They did not want it to be monotonous. They wanted it to focus on his life before um, the, the fall before and then his life after, almost like comparing the two different lives, almost like two different people even, you know, comparing it. And that's really what, what got them to get an amazing verdict. So they described in the article three pivotal moments in the trial. Number one was voir dire. Um, one of the attorneys handled the voir dire and she tried to, knowing that Santa Monica is a very conservative place where people have biases against slip and fall cases and against what some people call you know frivolous lawsuits or personal injury lawsuits, what the attorney did was she, um, she said, look, because there's going to be this suspicion, she kind of like fronted all that, right? And she said, let's be brutally honest. How do you really feel? Don't be afraid to hurt my feelings. Tell me, let me have it. And the jurors let her have it. And she kind of focused on slip and fall accidents. She said, by definition, our in, in a slip and fall accident, does that mean that somebody was not paying attention to their surroundings? Meaning if there was a slip and fall, is the person who fell somewhat to blame? And a lot of people said, yes. Now, that may be a way to get people off for cause, right? A cause challenge is basically you get as many cause challenges, they're unlimited, and you can get jurors off for cause who cannot be fair and neutral to both sides. Now, if you have that state of mind, right, that preconceived belief that if there just is a slip and fall, that the person who fell must be at fault, right? They, were, they weren't looking where they were going. They weren't paying attention. 
now you can't give both sides a fair shake, right? So you are not a fair juror and you can get removed for cause. So that was really a smart move to talk about that. And then the other thing um, she did was she talked about life experiences, attitudes, beliefs, and just the, the notion of brutal honesty. So that was pivotal moment number one. Pivotal moment number two, according to the article, was um, taking on the defense's favorite facts and doing it on the outset. So the defense basically was arguing that they thought that, you know, this whole case was silly. It was like a slip and fall. It was his fault. And they were trying to put the liability on the plaintiff. So even though they got a fair jury, they felt like they got a fair jury. You never know. You never can be 100% sure you got a fair jury. You get as fair a jury as you can in the voir dire and the jury selection. But, you know, some jurors still might have this bias. So they thought because of that, we are not going to start the trial talking about the incident. We're not going to start the trial talking about the slip and fall. They wanted to frame the case differently. They wanted to start the trial in opening statement talking about the life-changing forever injury that their client sustained. And that was a smart move because that was a strength of their case. And also the person, um, Jonathan, he did not look hurt, even though he had this surgery before and now he had a surgery after, he looked normal. And so in the opening statement, they said, hey, can you please stand up in the courtroom? And they said, look, this individual may look normal, but he has a machine inside his body because after the second surgery from the slip and fall, he ended up needing a spinal cord stimulator that was sending shocks to his brain and spinal cord. Um, and, you know, he, this, they almost said this is almost like a half man, half machine because he has to have this machine implanted in his spine and that's going to be something permanent. So they focused on the life changing injury. And then the third um, pivotal moment that they focused on was the plaintiff's direct examination. So when the plaintiff took the stand and the lawyer started questioning him and asking him how this has changed his life and everything about the incident, they did not focus on, you know, all of the, I mean, obviously they focused on all of the damages, but they did not want to make it um, a victim story. You know, they didn't want to make it so sad, like, oh, I'm so hurt, I can't do anything. What they did was they tried to frame it as a victor story. What are the things that you still do? A story of hope. What do you look forward to tomorrow? So it's like almost like the try story that you can't put this person down no matter what, even if he had a surgery before, even if he had a surgery, you know, after this slip and fall, he is not going to give up. He's a fighter. He's going to keep fighting. So they told that story. They, they took the jury to the time and place in Jonathan's life where times were good. And they showed that story of hope, promise, and what was possible before the injury. And then they showed him as a victor. And then that got the, juror, the jurors really invested in restoring their client, Jonathan, to the same place where he was before the fall, right? Because if you just complain and whine, what happens is people just get depressed and they think, well, it's a lost cause anyway. Money won't do any good. So what's the point? So they, th that was really smart. So what happened? How did, they, how did they resolve the case? So what happened was in the end, the verdict was $18.79 million, almost $19 million. And out of that $18.79 million, $17.773 million was in non-economic damages, meaning pain and suffering for the past as well as the future. $16 million of it was actually future pain and suffering alone because being 28 years old, he had like 50 probably or more years of future pain and suffering. So that was a huge amount. So kudos to these lawyers. Um, you know, that's a great, great result. The spine injury with a spinal cord stimulator. And it just goes to show even in a tough case, the slip and fall that a lot of lawyers would settle for like maybe less than a million dollars. These guys had the courage to go to trial, get a verdict, and they knocked it out of the park, almost $19 million. Kudos, amazing, great job. So just wanted to report that to you and um, let us know what questions you have. We are here for you. Um, we're going to do more videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We're really happy that recently we hit 3,000 subscribers and we keep seeing new subscribers, new views. Let us know what topics you'd like to see so we can make more videos for you. And we're always here. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And we will talk to you very soon. Okay. Bye-bye.